this is, this is, this is. Welcome to episode 469, everyone. A lot to talk about. We probably won't even get to everything we should talk about, but this Friday, this Friday, July 21st at mxpx.com, go there. You can pre-order our new album, MXPX Find A Way Home. MXPX has a new album, new songs coming, new vinyl. That's right. Of course, we'll have t-shirts, we'll have hoodies, we'll have joggers, we'll have all the things you want, but we got vinyl. What you really, we're, we're even going to have CDs. Let me just show you this real quick. Oh, oh yeah, we have the blur on. Here we go. Let's just take the blur off for a second here. Um, so look at this. Solid orange. I always love a solid color. Just something like super bright, super, super safety. And one of my, one of my other favorites is the Insomnia. You probably don't even know what that is. I'm not going to say anything else. We have some videos coming out that'll explain what everything is, but this is the insomnia red and yellow spatter. Look at that. Look at that. It's just beautiful. All right. You'll see. I'm just knocking things over in this studio left and right. I'm sorry, folks. I'm a little excited. Um, I, I just, you know, we've been gearing up to, to release the pre-order of find a way home and tell everybody about it and get into it and and it's a lot it's a lot and and it feels like we've been waiting for a little while but we've been just working on things i know you guys have been waiting a long while but we've just been working on this little bit this little bit and inevitably there's things that you can't really work on until a week before the record comes out a week before the pre-order comes out and all of that so i've been busy real busy but um, I don't like to be too busy. I like to be busy just, like, chilling. <laughs> anyway, um, mxpeaks.com, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But, you know, whenever you feel like it, you know, just get over there. Um, I don't anticipate it being, like, breaking the website or anything, but it's going to be busy. So <laughs> be ready. Be ready. And I appreciate your orders. I appreciate it because I'm actually going to be out of town when you guys are pre-ordering this record, I'm going to be in New York City. Um, I'm going to be doing some press for Find A Way Home. And then I'm going to transition into a Goldfinger show or two. So Goldfinger will be playing on Long Island at a festival on, I want to say that's a Friday. And then Saturday up in Boston. And uh, Big D and the Kids Table is playing. I don't really even know a whole lot about the shows. I just know I'll be there. Uh, I'm getting the set list going, getting my practicing going. It's been good. Um, I'm going to be bringing my acoustic and my bass on this trip because I will be doing doing some press, like I was saying. But, you know, I'm um, just getting things set up for the new album. Um, the new album comes out August 25th. So if you pre-order now, if you pre-order, not now, but pre-order on this Friday, the 21st. So this podcast comes out the, the Monday before the Friday. And if you pre-order Friday, uh, from mxpeaks.com, you're going to get the record shipped out right when the record comes out. So um, that's the idea. We're, we're, we're going to be, we're going to have it, sort of have all the orders and we're going to work on them uh, right before the record comes out so that any pre-orders get sent out first and get sent out. And, you know, you're still not going to get the record. You know, it's a pre-order, so you're not going to get the record right away when you pre-order it. You're going to have to wait until the album's out but I think you kind of, you get that, right? Um, but as you can see, we have vinyl here. We're ready to go. Uh, we're waiting on a few things, of course. But uh, all is on schedule and timed just right. Mwah. So uh, very excited. The songs, we'll talk about the songs. We'll talk about the songs. A lot of people expect one thing, hear another. Uh, hear one thing, expect, you know, whatever. Uh, but I haven't I haven't heard any any down negative things about any of the little clips that people have heard or anything like that. So um, very excited. And I know you guys are going to love these songs. These songs are fun and um, heartfelt in, in a lot of ways. So whew, let's get to it. And if you're a Goldfinger fan, I will see you hopefully out on the East Coast this weekend. If not, I'll be in Quebec, back in Quebec with Goldfinger in August before the album comes out. I'll be with Goldfinger, and then I come back, 
and uh, get with MXPX again. So busy, busy me. But I appreciate you guys listening. Let me do a couple voicemails just to do that. Uh, we haven't had a Music Monday in a little while, but I just haven't had time to sift through it all. But I will. I will. And I'm compiling, and we'll do a big one. We'll do a big episode. Um, all right. Thank you, guys. As always, if you want to be on the podcast, if you have a question, you want to start a topic of conversation, call me, leave a message, and the number is 360-830-6660. All right, let's get to a couple of these voicemails. Hi, Mike. This is Luke from Minneapolis, a longtime listener and a huge fan of MXPX. I have a few questions I wanted to ask you about. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you about was the Punk Rock Museum. I know that your bass guitar is there, and I was curious if you had more information about how that ended up there or if you have any plans to head out there and check things out or if you might even be giving tours since I know they uh, do tours from musicians. Uh, the second question that I had was I'm curious now that MXPX has Chris playing on guitar as a four-piece, if that's uh, really changed the writing style or your live playing style, and I'm curious if we might see any new style or changes in your music on this upcoming album based on having a consistent new guitar player in the band. Um, love to hear more about that. The final question I have is, I'm curious kind of your interactions with these other bands. I know in the past uh, you all have played with Wagwagon and Rufio, who are two of my favorite bands, and I actually saw you guys play with uh, Rufio when you went on tour with Reliant K. Just curious if you have any stories about those guys. I know um, the lead singer of Rufio, Scott Sellers, put out a cover of MXPX on one of his albums uh, that he kind of self-made in the last few years, a uh, cover of Your Problem, My Emergency. And then I know the singer of Lagwagon, Joey Cape, is, uh, interacts a lot with John Snodgrass and some of the guys in The Descendants. And so just curious if you've kind of crossed paths or have any uh, stories about them. Uh, that's all. Have a great day. Take it easy. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Luke. Um, Punk Rock Museum. Let's start with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, Fat Mike, Lisa Brownlee, they kind of contacted me early on just asking me to gather some MXPX stuff. And if you have anything you want to donate. And I was like, yeah, maybe I have something. So I, I found a base that I wasn't using too often and I, I pulled that out of storage and cleaned it up a little bit and and sent that out and and it's not a loaner I actually gave that base to I donated that base to the museum so it'll stay there forever um, unless they sell it I don't know uh, who knows but uh I'm sure it'll stay there forever and right now it's in the jam room and, and in the future maybe it'll swap out of that and just go to a display um, but I haven't been there myself I haven't I haven't visited the punk rock museum yet but I plan on going um, sometime this year, to before the end of the year for sure. Probably when we play, um, when we are Young Fest in Vegas. So that'll be October 22nd, uh, 23rd, somewhere in there. We play two shows. So yeah, I think I'll have time to do that. Now, am I doing any tours? Believe me, they've asked. They've asked multiple people keep asking me. And people are trying to get referrals and... Um, it's not that I don't want to. I don't know if I'd be a good host, a good guide, a good tour guide. Um, I would end up going off on tangents and just like forget what I'm talking about. And, you know, this podcast, basically. Uh, <laughs> and uh, But that's not the reason either. The main reason is I'm very busy. MXPX has a new album coming. Um, I do. We're, we're, we're not like most musicians where musicians have a traditional business structure where they have a manager and a record label and a tour manager. And all. We do have uh, a manager and, and an agent and we have, we don't, but we're the record label and we're our own mail order. Um, and so, you know, I have to meet the FedEx guy to get the vinyl and the lady's not there at the storage space. So we have to wait. And then I have to, instead of the guy carrying all the vinyl to our storage, I have to do it. You know, so it's like, oh, my God. So that's what I'm talking about. So because of that kind of stuff, I don't have time to, to be a, a tour guide. And and to be honest, um, I, I'm sure you get paid decent or whatever, but like it, it's and it's not about money, but it's just I can't 
I can't see myself doing it anytime real soon when I'm so busy with the new MXPX album. So Find A Way Home is, you know, it's hitting this summer, but we're going to continue pushing that record throughout the end of the year into 2024. And we'll see how 2025 goes. But 2024 for sure will be out there pushing this record. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to do that. So, so yeah, so, so maybe in the future I'll, I'll be a tour guy. But like I said, for those other reasons, like me not being able to focus, maybe I have a little uh, adult onset ADHD, something like that. But um, <laughs> self-diagnosed. Don't, don't really think I, I do. But we all have problems focusing in this new world we live in, right? Um, you were asking about Chris. Chris on, on second guitar. Uh, Chris as a fourth member of MXPX. Now, I get what you're saying because we haven't really focused on our second guitar players as much. We haven't had a second guitar player play on the recordings. Um, so we had, you know, we've had multiple guitar players, second guitar players throughout our years. And it started in probably 2000. It was 2003 or so, you know, 2003. So very early on, before everything and after was the record we first had. Uh, we had Neil uh, on second guitar and keyboards. So we had a song, have a song called Don't Walk Away. And it's got a keyboard part, a, a piano part. And so Neil live would play that. Ding, ding, ding. And so that kind of just started us now and again having a second guitar player. And when we found Chris, um, when I, when I found Chris, <laughs> uh, you know, he was, he was, he, he was playing in his band phasers on kill, uh, a great little punk band from Tacoma, Washington. And, um, he came and played uh, a couple solo shows with me, some private gigs I was doing. And I just noticed he, he had attention to detail. He was, was, I don't want to say professional because I mean we weren't like trying to be professional, but like he did what he said he was going to do, right? He was like, "Okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'll yeah, I'll be there, sure, no problem." Um, I love that. Like that's that's half of the battle is like having somebody that'll that'll learn the songs and play them correctly, and remember what we talked about, um, communicate all of these things. So I think you know with Chris, we kind of we immediately liked him a lot more than. Than, than your average Joe coming in, you know, and I had played with a lot of just a lot of people over the years. And, and I love all those people we played with, by the way, but they were all just kind of like on a journey on their path. And not to say Chris isn't on his path as well, but Chris was really all in with MXPX. He was like, okay, I, I'm doing this. Let's go. And he was buying guitars, new guitars all the time. Like he, yeah, I, I, you know, that, that to me made a big difference. So that's why I was like, okay, Chris, you know, Chris, you know, whether or not you believe he's a, a you know, an actual member of the band, that doesn't really matter because MXPX has been around for 31 years and people that know, really know, Chris was a fan of our band. He was, he wrote in during life in general and him and his brother were like writing letters to us. Um, so the fact that he, he's now in the band on the stage is, I think it's a really, really cool story. It's full circle. It's like if you if you have a dream, it's now and again it can come true, you know. And and of course with Chris, you know, becoming a part of MXPX, part of the crew, part of the family, you know, it comes with with its own kind of like. Well, I was, I didn't think it was going to be like this, but <laughs> but I think overall it's been amazing and. And having him on the last two records has, has uh, I don't think it's changed. It's changed a few songs. Like, he definitely adds his guitar parts, bits to the songs. But songwriting-wise, it doesn't change anything. I've always, like I said, I've written the songs, and then we've had second guitar players come and play live because of the songs, because of the parts being, a, you know, more than a three-piece can do. Um, so when it comes to songwriting, no, it doesn't change anything. I'm writing all the parts. Um, but when it comes to Chris in general, yeah, Chris changes the dynamic, just like Yuri changes the, the dynamic, just like Tom changes the, the dynamic. Sorry, I'm stumbling all over my words. I can't even catch up with myself. 
got a lot going on, but, um, but yeah, man, we love Chris and, uh, you know, for those that love him, he appreciates you a lot. It's funny because when we do signings and stuff, he'll come up and uh, most of the time people want Chris's autograph as well. They don't care. They want everybody. But now and again, you'll just get some like old school fan that only wants Tom, Yuri, Mike, and just kind of doesn't even see Chris, doesn't even realize he's there. Right. Um, and that's got to be kind of hard. That's like a hard, like, uh, punch in the gut. Right. Um, but you know what? It happens often enough. I think Chris is used to it. <laughs> but, uh, man, Chris puts up with a lot. I appreciate if If Chris ever listens to this, I appreciate you, Chris. I love you, and I'm glad you're part of the family. All right. Uh, Lagwagon, Rufio stories. You know, nothing crazy comes to mind. I love Scott Sellers. He is an amazing songwriter, a great musician. Um, we toured a couple times with Rufio. We were down in South America with Rufio and they're really big down there. So they were doing, they were supporting us and uh, the shows just went off. It was amazing because, because between MXPX and Rufio, uh, we had big, big shows and those guys were always fun to hang with. Good dudes, um, really down to earth. Like I said, they, they really could pull off what they, what they were writing musician wise like super intricate stuff um lag wagon same thing we've known those guys for so long even before rufio and uh met them on the warp tour and then we toured with them and uh we were out with them in in yeah warp tour in europe and in when you're in europe with a band you really you have different hang time because people are away from their home situation they're away away from regular friends they may have and especially in the earlier days of touring when we were with them um yeah, we, we really got to to do some crazy things. Um, I wish we had video cameras back then because I just remember, like, I remember uh, Chris, uh, the guitar player, Lagwagon, big Chris, big bitch. He, uh, he and one of the other guys stole a golf cart in the town of Nice, France, and that was fine, you know, whatever, but then they accidentally ran into this canal and so they got the golf cart stuck in the canal and they couldn't you know put it back where they found it so like things like that come to mind you know um <laughs> i just remember like it's it, it looks like a video in my head because i've seen so many viral videos like that but that happened like in my life and it was the lag wagon guys so yeah cool, cool story I, you know whatever uh, but that was in Nice, France on the Warp Tour, and it was like a sideshow where Tony Hawk and Steve Caballero and a bunch of skaters were doing this skate exhibition, and, and a small few of the bands, like five bands from the main Warp Tour, broke off and did this show, and MXPX was one of those bands. So, And obviously, so was Lagwagon. Um, all right, I'm going to do another voicemail. Thanks for, thanks for calling in, Luke. I'm six years old. I love P. I'm going to first grade soon. I love MXPX. Emma. Hi. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. <laughs> Emma, thank you for calling in. You're six years old and you love MXPX. Wow. I appreciate that. Uh, we all do. Uh, we hope you love the new album as much as we love the new album. And, um, and it's, it's okay if you don't. It really is. It's going to be okay. So just you do you and um, have a great day, okay? A great week, a great night, whatever it is. Um, and spend some good t quality time with your parents. <laughs> All right. Let me do one more voicemail. Hello, Michael. It's Todd from Massachusetts. Uh, we've met like a bunch of times over the years. You might remember me from the 20th anniversary in New York City. I had pizza with you guys. I, won, like, I was in the fan club and whatever. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, I just had a quick question about your writing style. I apologize if you mentioned this in one of your podcasts. I really jump around podcasts a lot, so I haven't listened to like every episode. But I've been uh, going down a real Mike Herrera wormhole the past few weeks, just listening to everything you've done again for the billionth time. And uh, I was just wondering, like, how different it is to write for each particular band, whether it be Arthur with like the more emo stuff, for lack of a better word, and Tumble Down being amazing and country rockabilly-ish. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, MXPX. Um, I love it all. I was just curious. 
Thank you. That's a great question. And I have a pretty easy answer for you, Todd. And I think I remember who, which, who you are, Todd, uh, the pizza guy. Uh, not pizza guy. You're not the pizza guy. But <laughs> meeting you at the pizza, the pizza eatery. Anyway, whatever. I made it weird. Um, <laughs> songwriting. So how I do it nowadays is I... And how I did it, you know, with Tumble Down and all that is when I come up with an idea on guitar or a melody, I might have just one line of lyric. I might have just a guitar part, a progression, and I'll think, okay, this sounds like Arthur or this sounds like Tumble Down or this sounds like MXPX. And so I'll, I'll record that and I'll write for the very first idea. I always put a one. So it's like the first idea. First time I ever had this idea of, for this song. And so I'll put a one and I'll put whatever it is, MXPX punk pr progression, you know, something like that. And then I'll put like uh, needs chorus or parts or all parts. I mean, I'll put little notes that might tell me what this is. And sometimes it's just me singing in the bathroom like late at night going. And then not trying to wake people up. Uh, sometimes it's me on guitar just playing full on parts and a lot of times I'll I'll take that vocal idea that and I'll try to figure that out on a guitar. I'll be like, okay, what would that be with a guitar? And that's usually how I, I decide what goes where. And, and it's just the ideas. You have these initial ideas. So like I, I call them starters. Think of it like planting a tree or planting a, a, a something in the garden. Uh, a vegetable, you get these starter plants that are just little mini plants. And that's what I come up with throughout any day throughout my year is if I have an idea for a song, if it's lyrics, if it's words, I'll write it down. If it's a title, I'll write it down with the date and that's it, you know, in, in on my notes. If it's a, 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 you know, voice memo idea, then, you know, same thing. I kind of like, I'll put, I'll put, the idea down and then I'll, I'll put that in a starter folder. And then once I have multiple ideas and I know, okay, this is a song, this is going to be a song. I'm, I'm sure that authors are kind of like, okay, this is a book. Once you have enough articles about the same type of subject, this is a book. So if I have enough ideas and it doesn't, you don't have to have a lot of ideas for a song. You can have one idea. You can make a song out of it. So I'll put, I'll take it out of the starter folder on my phone on my uh, voice memo app. I'll take it out of the starter folder and I'll start a new folder. I'll like dink, 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 choose all those, move, move to folder, and then I'll choose, uh, you know, create new folder. And then I'll name it whatever song title, working song title I have. And so that becomes, boom, I've got uh, song title idea, song idea, song idea here. And then I've got actually like tumble down ideas that are a bunch of different songs just in that one folder. And I've got like maybe some like Mike Herrera solo ideas. But for me, solo stuff can always become either an MXPX song, a tumble down song, or, well, now that Arthur isn't really around, I guess that's my solo stuff. You know, like anything that doesn't fit in those two categories could be, you know, Mike Herrera solo. Um, I don't write things for Goldfinger until John says, hey, write me a verse. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like that doesn't really count. Like I don't really keep Goldfinger ideas in the back of my pocket because it's so random and Goldfinger, you know, could have parts and elements that would work with really anything, but especially MXPX. Um, so yeah, so that, th those, those ideas would probably just be by default an MXPX idea. But when I do write for a Goldfinger, it's just on a song by song basis, t uh, or a couple songs, you know, at once, I could get a batch of songs from John from the, from the last album, uh, never look back. He sent me like a few different batches at a, a few different times, but he would send like a, a link Dropbox link with songs in them. Uh, some of them had bass lines, some of them didn't, most of them didn't have bass lines, they were just some really crude, and then as he would record more, he would send me new versions, remixed versions of those, and I would just learn those, and I would be like, okay, there's a hole there, he'd be like, hey, can you write the verse, second verse for this, write me a bridge for this, and he's talking about lyrics, uh, he's not talking about melody necessarily, I mean, of course, I'm going to sing it, so I kind of like change 
change it a little bit, but mostly John's writing those melodies and um, I just write the lyrics for, for whatever it is I'm, I'm adding. Yeah. And you know, like bass lines. I, I, I don't consider like if I change up the bass line, I, I didn't write that bass line. I, I feel like he wrote the song and I'm just putting my thing on it um, no matter what. So songwriting is, is fun uh, when it's working well. It's really not fun when, when you, you get that frustration of like nothing seems to fit you can't think of what you know what you want to do but you just can't you just can't make it happen uh, but I do love the puzzle of songwriting it's like solving a puzzle like a Rubik's Cube like something that not a lot of people can do but I can do it and and that makes me special in my own way <laughs> you know what else makes me special Todd Furnace Fest MXPX is going to be at Furnace Fest. We're headlining September 22nd, I think. It's a Friday night, so come on Friday night and then uh, stay for Saturday night. Turnstile will be headlining Saturday. And then Pennywise and Bane are headlining Sunday night. So no matter what night you are going to be there, it's going to be awesome. But Friday night, MXPX, Hate Breed is going to be playing right before us, opening up for us. Reliant K. You just mentioned Reliant. Somebody re mentioned Reliant K earlier. Luke, I think. Um, and Berlin, good friends of ours. I opened for them acoustically on their very last tour, but they're back. Now they're opening for MXPX. So uh, it's good to have them. And there's a bunch of bands playing Friday. So like I be keep telling people, if you're going to pick one crazy thing to do all year, come to Furnace Fest to see MXPX because we're going to play a set that you will not want to miss. It will probably be the best set we've ever done in our 31 years. I'm just going to put it there. All right. All right, you guys. <sighs> MXPX.com, Friday, July 21st, pre-order. Find a way home. So excited. We got vinyl. We got a bunch of different variations of vinyl. We have a picture disc. We have hoodies, T-shirts. We got a black and white bundle. If you don't like all the colors, we got a black and white bundle. So uh, we got we try to have a little something for everybody, but as always, we're just doing the best we can. We're a mom and pop store. We have a few employees. We have a few people set to help us out for the pre-orders and for the orders for the album, and we're ready to rock. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks for the love. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Hit me in the uh, My Career Podcast Facebook group, and that's the place where we're all joining together to talk about whatever it is, topics you guys want to talk about. And of course, if you want to also follow on the other platforms, it's on Instagram, it's My Career Podcast. On Twitter, it's My Career Pod. And guess what? MXPX is on TikTok, as well as I am on TikTok, My Career TD. And um, yeah, bit the bullet, didn't want to do it, but I did it. And it's not that bad, folks. You just don't have to sit there. And it, it's just like Instagram. It really is. It's just slightly different. So I don't know. I, the whole China thing spying on us, it's like, well, so is America. So uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to go on a rant at the end of this podcast for no reason, absolutely whatsoever. <laughs> if you've listened to my podcast for a while, this doesn't seem weird at all. This is very normal. Um, but shout out to Bob McKnight for producing and being the ace that he is. He's running the, the moderation over on the Facebook group. And that way it keeps the spam out. We've kept the spam out quite a bit lately, I think. And I hope you guys have uh, realized that. And one more time, I know I haven't released a Music Monday in a little while, but I will. I will soon. Next couple episodes at some point. Um, but if you're going to submit, please submit a YouTube link on the Facebook group. That's It's getting too busy where I just got to have a face. Uh, it's got to be put on the Facebook group with a YouTube link. All right. At some point this summer, I am going to have my good friend Jeff Betker on the podcast. I'm trying to get him on before his show in Bremerton. That's at the end of the month in July uh, the 28th. It's a Saturday night in Bremerton at the, uh, the uh, uh, where is it? Shoot. I can't remember where it's at. But what's important is 90 Pound Wuss is coming to Bremerton it's going to be amazing. It's at the old Redwood Cinema. I can't remember the name of the new venue, but um, but yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. I'm going to be there for sure, and I'm going to have him on as soon as he can get over here to do it. And, and if not, maybe we'll just do it do it on Skype or something. But I'd like to have he's he's fairly local, so I'd like to have him 
have him on in person and hang. Speaking of which, Jeff's going to be at Furnace Fest. Hmm. All right. Until next week, you guys. Remember, pre-order Friday. Let's go. Tell all the friends you know, anybody that you know likes MXPX or punk rock, please tell them about the new album, the new song. Oh, is there a new song? There will be. There will be. Stay tuned. <laughs>